giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the Sweet Tea Region Recap for Week 6. Reporting for first updates now, I'm John. I'm Griffin. And I'm Kristen. Tonight, we're going to cover the district championship events that took place this past weekend in North Carolina and Georgia, and we'll also have a few discussion topics. And we're going to give you a preview for the CHS district championship coming up later this week. But before we get started... It seems like Redfish Robotics is back at it again with the Fun Mug giveaway. Tyler, can you tell our viewers a little bit more about it? Yeah, sorry about that, uh, which apparently I brought up the wrong website for. Man, I am just uh, not doing well today. So uh, once again, our friends at Redfish Robotics giving away the mugs. Uh, if you're interested in winning, all you got to do is make sure you click that little follow button. Uh, or if you choose to subscribe, you'll get five times luck. And the uh, keyword uh, for tonight is, well, what was Tyler forgot for the first one? So let's do Tyler remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do that. Tyler remembered uh, for this one on here. Uh, so type that in. Uh, we'll give away that near the end of the show. And thanks again to Redfish Robotics. Check it out at tinyurl forward slash Redfish Robotics. <laughs> thanks, Tyler. All righty then. So to kick things right off, 46 teams made the journey down to Emerson or up to Emerson, Georgia, depending on where you started from, uh, to the Lake Point Champion Center to play for the Peachtree District Championship title for Destination Deep Space. In quals, we saw a lot of tight matches with win margins around 14 points and the winning alliance score typically being around 70 points. We had 19 completed rockets, one double rocket match, and nearly had a second. We had 75 HAB Level 3 climbs and a few double HAB 3 climbs and 13 unicorn matches. We also had two matches that I remember where both Alliance was, were able to finish the rocket and HAB docking RP task right before the match ended. This event was far deeper in gameplay ability than we had seen last year in Power Up, and each match required a high level of execution from each Alliance to be able to win. There were several qual matches where Alliances scored over 80 points and still lost. At the end of the qualifying rounds, with an average ranking score of 3, it was the team in purple and green, that's right, it's 4910 East Cobb Robotics, one of the the Peachtree District's two Swiss Army knife teams capable of soloing a rocket and a level three climb. With their first pick, they chose 2974 Walton Robotics, one of the most consistent rocket fillers of the event, who also had a level two climb capability. And then they rounded out their alliance with team 2415, the Westminster Wildcats, as a dedicated defender. Now, the number one alliance made quick work of their opponents through the quarters in the semis to end up in the finals. Against them stood the second seed alliance, consisting of my team, Team 1102 Make and Magic, the other Swiss Army Knife team of the Peachtree District, also capable of soloing, solo completing a rocket and a HAB 3 climb, and then our first selection, Team 1746 Auto. <laughs> the team this team this team was the event's black magic robot and when firing on all cylinders looked to be one of the fastest solo rocket complete capable teams our second pick was team protocol x robotics 7427 who with who was surprisingly still available even though they had a very consistent vacuum hab level three climb some offensive capability, and of course, the district's only swerve drive that proved to be more than capable to be able to play smart defense. Uh, 
Now, coming into the finals matches, the audience was expecting quite the spectacle performance, as the number one alliance had just hit their stride in the semifinals, breaking through 90 points. While the number two alliance had consistently scored between 80 and 90 points each match they had played together so far. However, unfortunately, a breakdown of the number two alliance captain, my team's 1102's robot, left their robot and uh, rest their alliance under power. With our, our robot unable, with our team unable to prepare our robot in time, and the defensive disruption of 2415 against our partner 1746, uh, the number one seed alliance was able to cruise through the finals to seal their victory. While it's definitely not how we would like things to have ended, we'd like to congratulate the winners and wish all of the Peachtree teams good luck next week in Houston. Taking home awards at the Peachtree District Championship with the rookie all-star, we would like to congratulate Team 7514 Eve Robotics, a wonderful group of girls that I had some time to help out earlier at Gainesville this year, and Team 7451, Avenger Robotics, with one of the cleanest rookie robots I saw this year. And for those of you paying attention, for some strange reason, both of those teams used the exact same numbers in a different order. <laughs> Taking home the Engineering Inspiration Award this weekend, congrats to Team 2974 Walton Robotics, getting them that gold-silver cling bling. And 1683, the Techno Titans. And lastly, but not least, of course, the Peachtree District Championship Chairman's Awards go went to Team 4188, the Columbus Space Program, and to Team 4468, the Fernbank Lynx. It was a fun weekend, for sure, and I was able to stop in with a few Peachtree teams to get some behind-the-bumpers video footage that you should definitely check out whenever you get a chance later this week on the fun YouTube channel. So, Kristen, how was the North Carolina District Championship? Well, this year was by far the most fun North Carolina District Championship that I've ever been to for a multitude of reasons. Uh, on a personal level, uh, our team's fit was situated among some close friends between 5190, 900, and 1533, which lent to some great friendly banter throughout the weekend. On another level, however, this is without a doubt the deepest the field has ever been in a North Carolina District Championship event, or even arguably than any event in the state in the last 10 years before we went districts, but I might be a little bit biased. <laughs> there were only two or three teams that I would put in the category of there's no way this team will get picked for anything, and even those teams still managed to do fairly well. Almost every qualification match resulted in at least one HAB docking rank point, typically two. And we had four unicorn matches, two of which were triggered by full rockets, bringing the state's total completed rockets to three. It might be more. I don't remember. But uh, teams you would traditionally see playing defense were understandably very hesitant to do so after Asheville's bloodbath of G20 cards and the storm of G20 cards issued in week five across the FRC world. Uh, I can tell you our team explicitly avoided any kind of opponent side defense because we had received three of them alone in Asheville and had no desire to be labeled a card risk. Uh, this hurt the strategy of several traditionally defensive robots quite significantly. Um, but a lot of them, you know, they rolled with the punches like you have to with anything in life. And uh, even the teams that did play defense, uh, there weren't nearly as many G20 cards as issued in previous weeks. So it was nice to see some clean matches for once. Many will probably agree that alliance selections went a little differently than how most expected. However, I could have told you after Asheville that 5190, the number one ranked seed, would absolutely pick 1533 Triple Strange, despite what a few people told me at the event. I was actually quite surprised to see teams like 7890 Sequence, 4290 Bots on Wheels, and 2655 The Flying Platypi, and 6729 Robcobots, still my favorite defense robot in the state, and others still left for grabs after the first round of picks. Triple Strange would finally get their reprieve facing off at the number 8 alliance of 2640 Hotbots, 6500 Gearcats, and none other than 2655 Flying Platypi, who had beat them at their two events earlier in the season. After being second place, the 1-2 power combo of 5190 Green Hope Falcons and 1533 Triple Strange would best the 8th seed in the quarters after two surprisingly close matches finishing off with a full send-it finish in match two after 1533 and 2655 engaged in a pushing match for the large portion of the match, raced off with 20 seconds left to each try to score one more cargo, then raced to fly onto their respective Habs in the last three seconds. So it was quite an exciting match. Quarters proceeded in chalkboard, pa bleh, chalkboard fashion, but it was Alliance 3 that bested Alliance 2 in the semis. 
I lost my place. Oh no. Cat, go. <laughs> we have Kiko trying to be on first updates now tonight. <laughs> All right. Corners proceeded in chalkboard fashion, but it was Alliance 3 that bested Alliance 2 in the semis. And so it was Alliance 3, consisting of 587 Hedgehogs, 5511 Cortex, and 6729 Robcobots, who went on to face the power team of 5190, 1533, and 4290. Both matches resulted in a G20, unfortunately, after 6729 got a little too rowdy with defense, which unfortunately was the deciding factor in the second match. Without that tech foul and red card, Alliance 3 would have won the match and taken it to a tiebreaker. That being said, this year's North, Char North Carolina Championship playoffs was still a spectacular set of matches to watch. Congratulations to 5190 Green Hope Falcons, 1533 Triple Strange, and 4290 Bots on Wheels for their event win and advancement to South Worlds. Another huge congratulations to 2682 Boneyard on a much-deserved chairman's win for all of their efforts in cyberbullying awareness and being the first to step up and organize a quiet space at every North Carolina event this year. And congratulations to 5854 Glitch on winning Engineering Inspiration and to 5190 Green Hope Falcons as well for that gold-silver cling-bling. And, of course, a well-deserved congratulations to 7443 Overhill Jaguars on, on winning Rookie All-Star Award. Awesome. Well, I've got a couple of questions to ask, and I'd like to hear what the uh, chat has to say about this as well. So at the highest levels of play this year, uh, I'm really wondering how teams are going to really differentiate, differentiate themselves from one another. With a few exceptions in the FRC world, like teams like 2910, most of the top alliances still seem to be built around the two fast best rocket capable robots do you guys think this trend is going to continue moving into champs or do you still think that the lower uh, level robots will break through to the top seeds potentially i think uh, well go, go ahead, ahead. Right, go ahead no you go all right um they i think you're still going to see something very similar you're going to see the two fastest rocket rocket capable robots in combination with um the meta sort of seems to be developing into whoever is the best defense robot left over. Um, and that seems to be a really powerful combo just because if you wind up with three robots on the same side and someone else sends to play defense, it, you wind up with a really congested field. And so that, that seems to be the combo that works the best. Yeah, I, I, have, I do have to agree with that. But I think another thing is that there are teams out there that chose to do only cargo and only hatch, but are going to end up in the higher rankings because of, say, climb, climbing. So I feel like for those teams, they're going to probably have to employ different strategies because they that team themselves cannot do a rocket on their own. So, for example, my team, they are a hatch-only robot. So in order for them to do well, and if they seed high, because they do have a very consistent climber, they need to find someone who can do cargo and they need to work with someone who can like they can do cycles extremely well and try and get an uncongested traffic. Like for example, there was a team that went all the way to the finals at Portsmouth this year that was an all scoring team and played very little defense. And they simply did that because they knew how to run without running into each other and how to deal with the defender bot. Yeah. And there are, I, I'd be interested as I start to look more towards Worlds and really do more research into the other teams from the other regions qualified for Houston Champs as to who is going to be the teams to look out for. I know that there's a team from the Peachtree District that I'm most familiar with, um, Team 5109 Gladiator Robotics. They're one of the teams that chose to stay low level. They do um, hatches and balls on the lowest level. They can do it on the low level of the rocket, the low level, obviously, the cargo ship as well. But they also have a pretty consistent level three climb. They were actually, I believe, seated. Let me check just to be sure. They were seated third at the um, Peachtree District Championship right behind us. So teams like that that have that, pretty much guaranteed to have level three climb that are capable of more than just hatches, but can do a bit of both and do them both. Well, it, I, it's going to be interesting to me to see how those teams stack up because you've got the teams that can do everything that can do both the rocket and the, um, the have level three climb. But then 
I'm not going to be surprised at all to see right below them are the teams that can only do the low level but still have that had level three climb because the teams that just do the rocket are going to have a harder time typically doing every single match when defense comes their way. I mean, my team and most of the other rocket-capable teams Whenever a defense robot came over, you had to get pretty lucky in that you were moving fast enough to be able to finish the rocket, or you just weren't going to finish it at all. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that evolves as we move towards champs next week. Yeah, and that <laughs> happened at some of my events as well, because there was uh, an alliance where there was a very fast cargo bot and a hybrid uh, rocket scoring bot. Now... The people, the opponents decided to send a defender against the rocket bot, but what they didn't realize is that they, the cargo bot was the one actually scoring more of the points. And it's all about based upon which is the faster of the cycles. And because that cargo, that cargo bot was able to do it faster, they lost out because they chose not to defend them. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. So moving forward from here, we're going to give you guys a quick look into the. Uh, F Southeast top 10 for this week. Why don't you give us who's on the list for this week, Kristen? All right. On this week's list, we have 2974 from Marietta, Georgia, Walton Robotics, winners of the Peachtree District Champs. 4910 from Marietta, Georgia, East Cobb Robotics, winners of the District uh, Peachtree District Championship. And 1102 from Augusta, making magic finalists at the Peachtree Championship. 1746 from Cumming, Georgia, Auto, finalists at the Peachtree District Championship. <clears throat> then we had 5190 from Cary, North Carolina, uh, Green Hope Falcons. You have 1414 from Atlanta, Georgia, IHOT, also quarter finalists at Peachtree District Championships. 1533 Triple Strange from Greensboro, North Carolina, winners of the North Carolina District Championship. 6829 from Swanee, Swanee, Georgia, Ignite Robotics, quarterfinalists at Peachtree District Championship. 5511, Cortex Robotics from Cary, North Carolina, finalists at North Carolina District Championship. And 1771 from Swanee, Georgia, North Gwinnett Robotics, semifinalists at the Peachtree District Championship. That is quite the lineup. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So just a quick thing for me, guys, for those who uh, who didn't know, these are specifically uh, from voters located in these regions or who identify that they uh, that they represent these regions, essentially. So when you do the FRC top 25 voting, you will select a region uh, that you're representing. So for these top 10s, it's going to be people from this area or people who are uh, signaling that they are from this area. So. When you look at the votes tomorrow for the FRC Top 25, this order might change, but that's based on global votes, not based on those uh, people voting specifically from this geographical area. Yeah. Thank you, Tyler. All righty then. So, Griffin, I hear you have some exciting things to share with us about the event coming up this week in your area. All right. Chesapeake Digital Champs being hosted at GMU. It's probably going to be one of the best district champs in Chesapeake history simply for the fact that as followed by uh, as a, as similar to the other district champs that have happened this weekend it's going to be a very very deep field like I honestly couldn't tell you a robot that's in the field that would be a bad pick like I, I'll get let me watch it and then I'll tell you but as of right at the, as of this moment there are no bad picks <laughs> First off, I'd like to congratulate people who got off the wait list due to declines of 5830 Life Engineering, 540 Talent, and 7886 Cadet Robotics. Now, looking at the top front runners of the event, it's probably going to be the Rocketeers running the event of 1885, 1418, 1262, 1610, 401, and 977. But you also need to be looking out for the cargo ship uh, masters, such as 2998, 346, 44, 449, eh. Uh, 836 and 614. Now, the cli now as shown in history, the climbers are going to be the ones up in the rankings because they're going to get that third ranking point. But because of how deep the field is, you ha you're going to be seeing a lot more rockets finished, and especially at this event since everybody's starting to get like everything tuned in at their third event. And I'm going to expect, I'm going to guess that people that are the rocket placers and can do the climb are going to be up at, up in the rankings because 
they might maybe they get only one, but that is still one, and then there's the higher chance of getting four. Now, a little look at chairmans. There's, of course, the normal front runners of 1885 and 1629 who have won it like the past two years, but there are possible dethrone or people who are coming up to dethrone him in 1086 who won it back in 2016, and then 4541 who just won it for the first time this year. And honestly, I it's possible that one of those two is going to get dethroned. I am predicting 1885 is going to hold on to that simply for the fact that it's 1885 chairmans, but I honestly see like 1086 or 4541 dethroning 1629 possibly. It's definitely going to be an interesting event to watch, and I'm definitely going to check out a couple of the matches since there's not a whole lot else going on other than pre-scouting for champs for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, it's now the moment you've all been waiting for. It's fun mug drawing time. Tyler, who's our winner? All right, we'll draw for the uh, winner there. Once again, you have the type in. Tyler remembered, since I remembered to do it this time, and I didn't do it on the last show. Uh, so the winner for this one is going to be, there we go, uh, Internet Shortcut. Congratulations. Uh, Internet Shortcut, you've shortcut your way to winning a fun mug. Uh, so congratulations. Oh, you didn't have to pay for it, so I forgot it's kind of a shortcut, right? Uh, so once again, just a reminder, please reach out to First Updates now, either on our Discord or through Twitch. We need your first name, last name, mailing address, zip code, city, all that fun stuff, right? So congratulations, and thanks again to Redfish Robotics. Go check it out. Tiny URL forward slash Redfish Robotics. I swear, we keep getting the interesting name once on our show. <laughs> I don't remember what it was a few weeks ago, but yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. Well, everybody, that's all we've got for you tonight down here in the southeastern region. Thank you to everybody who's been watching us tonight. And if you want some more first robotics in your life and you like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show and that this is the place to go for all things FRC. If you've got a few bucks to share through bits, donations, or even a subscription, we would really appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and we're delighted to have you on board. On behalf of Kristen, Griffin, and myself, and of course, our wonderful producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in, and thanks again to all of our moderators in the chat. Our next show coming up is Infimidation, first in Michigan, and we'll talk to you next week on the FRC Sweet Tea Region Recap. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.